And you are live. Aloha Snack Bar. It's uh, the one and only the gorilla in the Econo Mist coming to you live with my main man, who is the master of the flux capacitor, the one and only CJ for another mornings with Rogue Money. With that being said, check out our sponsors at myfreedomnow.us if you're being threatened by creditors, if they're if they're if you are living in fear that they're going to snatch your kitten or your puppy dog and uh, hold them for ransom, then you need to call myfreedomnow.us and learn how you can get free your debt, clear your credit, and be on a way to a brand new financial life. Also, check us out on YouTube. Um, yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Follow us on roguemoney.net. Uh, check us out on Twitter at the Rogue Money and the Rogue Money Facebook page. CJ, with that being said, and I'm not as energetic as I was the other day, but anyway, <laughs> what's <laughs> crack lacking, bro? I mean, I was just talking to you about the weather, man. I'm 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 still getting over and coming to terms with the fact that it was like fifty something degrees yesterday. And today I wake up, it's like twenty something degrees and snowing. I don't yeah, get these it. weather patterns have just been crazy, V. Just insane. Uh, I think the only thing that's left is I have to pay money to Al Gore and he can stop it. That's what I think. <laughs> You know Al Gore. You know he he solves everything. You know he's got the he's got the next internet uh, waiting uh, for development. He's ready to deploy it out. V. I can't wait, man. It's going to be a more safer internet. <clears throat> I don't have to worry about cyber bullying. Al's going to protect me. <laughs> no more safe spaces. None whatsoever. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, it's on like Donkey Kong, and it's Friday, bro. What's yeah, going on? What's it, on the radar? Is, you know, <clears throat> you know, we were calling V for Trump to do the one-two counterpunch, but it looks like he's just completely going for the knockout blow. You know, yesterday, you know, Sessions came out and announced that they're going to be reviewing, you know, everything that the U.S. Justice Department did uh, during those eight years, and including the actions of the two former uh, AG. So he announces that. And then not much you know, later than that, Ted Cruz comes out and, and says the, I think it was like 47 crimes or something like that commit, committed by, you know, Obama. So they, so he's done a great job of, of partnering up with those that are, that can pursue some of these things. And it was so good to see that not only uh, does he have them backpedaling with some of his actions, but he probably has them really thinking about packing up and leaving the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He could probably go back to uh, Kenya <laughs> from whence he came. Did you hear that his uh, brother dropped the real birth certificate? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to be interested to see if we get some forensic experts on that that yeah. uh, that document to, to to verify it's legitimate. But yeah, it is, and his brother's always you know stated that, and and people wonder you know how exactly that happened. Well, as, you know, as you know, whenever he was in Hawaii and his mom, they would they they would travel you know quite a bit. So yep. more than likely, if she was traveling, you know, while she was expecting, it, it's definitely a possibility that that happened. Be, I mean, it's not well, uncommon. They even have the little footprint, uh, you know, uh, identification thing. Uh, so it says uh, this is from uh, the American Mirror. Uh, it says, uh, and um, uh, and Obama has joined the birther movement. Malik Obama, Barack's half brother, tweeted an image of what appears to be Barack's uh, birth certificate, except it's not from Hawaii, but rather Kenya. What's this he tweeted? <laughs> the document is from the Coast Province General Hospital of Mombasa, British Protectorate of Kenya, and is and is back and is for Barack Obama the second, who was born on the fourth day of August, nineteen sixty one. In twenty eleven, the White House released what claimed to be I mean it's unreal. There it is. <laughs> yeah, and, and the amazing thing is is that when you look at it, you know, there's so many different things that signaled that V, whether it was his family that continuously stated that, yeah, I remember when he was born, he was born right over here in this this hut, and some of the family members rem remember that. And and then in fa in fact, you know, he, you know, whenever he covers up and 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 keeps all of his educational records and his, his his those things are completely, you know, they're they're off record. You know, you can't search those things, you can't find those things. So, you know, in doubt. At minimum, you know, he registered as a foreign, you know, exchange student, more than likely to qualify for for free money, you know, to get accepted, you know, for a, a, just just amazing. But if if that comes out and they they validate that that document, it'll be very interesting to see what they do with it. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's uh, <clears throat> it will be very, very, very funny. <laughs> the guy should just leave. He's, this is what happens when you decide to like listen to the advice of Val Valerie Jarrett. 
a person who's failed you for eight years and, and move into a White House down the street from Trump in the middle of the MAGA revolution. Bad idea, Barry. Bad idea. You just couldn't go quietly into the night, man. <laughs> nope, he couldn't. He couldn't, and he wants to stay actively involved with you know, the party as if they didn't, you know, learn anything. I can't remember there was an estimate the other day that came out that said that, you know, across the United States, whether it's, you know, you know, governors or, you know, the House, the Senate, how many, how many flips there's been between, you know, at one time, you know, Democratic strongholds yeah. uh, to Republican. And it's just amazing that whenever he came aboard and continuously just kind of flip the Democratic Party away from the, the principles of, you know, of being a libertarian to being more of a, uh, a fascist, more a collective society based upon upon social justice. And it's so true that that happened. And unfortunately, it, it turned a lot of people off. Oh, 1000 percent, man. It's uh, it's exactly what happened with uh, with Adolf Hitler when he came to power. It's, it's the same thing. You know, he radicalized his party and you know, he radicalized Germany, you know, um, you know, with the Nazis, excuse me. It's the same thing with Obama done. Obama has radicalized liberals to the point where the majority of these libs went from being liberals to absolute frothing in the mouth left wing lunatics. And that's where we are today. It's unreal. Unreal. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> so, you know, obviously you know, we're saying some some more appointees, you know, a, a great move in the, in the article. Check it out. Make sure to go roguemoney.net and check out article Ken Shortgren Jr. posted up in regards to uh, President Trump's selection for ambassador to Russia, uh, John John Huntsman, who has extensive, extensive, extensive background in you know foreign policy, and interesting enough, it's more tied to to you know to China in terms of you know he was uh, ambassador to China between 2009 2011. Uh, his one of his uh, children is adopted uh, you know from there, but mm -hmm. uh, it's a, it's a perfect match. It's a perfect plug in in, in terms of thinking. The, the U.S. Russian relationship and how important it's going to be for someone to understand the dynamics of, of the relationship with China. And so, again, you know, someone that maybe didn't see necessarily eye to eye with with Trump, you know, Huntsman ran for president back in in 2012. I think he did come out and say, like most Republicans did say things ab about Trump. But I think it's more more of a message via regarding, you know, the the leadership style and the fact that it's okay to have people with opposing opinions yep. in leadership positions. It's actually healthy. It's 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 very healthy to do that versus a, an Obama administration where all you do is is put people in positions have the exact same ideologies and beliefs as you. That's very dangerous to do that. And yeah, and and people not only that have the same, but they're also as inept as you are. They're also <laughs> exactly, as yeah. as you are. It's like it's 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 he cloned himself so many times. I mean, he was given positions to left and right. Like, you know, Caroline Kennedy, uh, can I be ambassador? Sure, go to Japan, and you can start negotiating for us. <laughs> There's a winner. Jeez, man, unreal. Yeah, and it's a great move because when you think about it and the years that we put these, these sanctions that we, you know, to our own stupidity, the United States, I'm speaking about our foreign policy, these sanctions that we thought were going to make a huge impact, you know, with Russia – and they're laughing at our face, V, because it's done everything but that. And you see, yeah, it dampered their the 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 ruble for a little bit, but now it's yeah. bouncing back. Their economies, their trade relationship that they're doing. So this myth that those the the actual uh, going through and placing placing those sanctions against Russia were going to make any impact just are completely gone. So it, it's gonna, we're going to have to open up the dialogue now regarding conversation as to how to repair those relationship because they're perfectly fine divorcing from from the west and and not having any type of of arrangements with us they're perfectly fine they're they're going in the right direction right and 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 one of the ways that they're doing that is they they're ramping up a physical economy they're backing their currency with gold and you can go out and, and research this in 2015 best performing uh you know stock market and currency in 2015 when the sanctions were at their highest was the russian stock market it was the Moscow Stock Exchange and 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 freaking uh, the the Russian ruble? Okay, that's what it is. I mean, there's that that myth that oh my God, you know, Putin he needs to get Trump in there. He gets Trump's the Manchurian candidate, and once uh, you know, Putin wants Trump in there to get rid of the sanctions. Why? You know, I even wrote about this. I even talked about this. The sanctions are useless, and they're exactly what Russia needed. 
it's what it's what woke up the Russians to the fact that hey, you know what? We need to uh, really get away from the unpredictable loony left. Uh, I'm sorry, the unpredictable loony West, because that's exactly what's happening. Okay, the only ones that were crushed during these Russian sanctions were those that were dependent upon Russian trade. Italy, Germany, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Germany especially. You know, six hundred thousand jobs were affected. Th tens of thousands of businesses were affected. Un unbelievable. I'm sorry, six million jobs were affected because of the Russian sanctions against Russia. You know, that's how it affected Germany. Major, major issues, man. Yeah, and to, and to our own stupidity, you know, we just continue, you know, doubling down. And our listeners are smart enough to understand that they needed Russia to become that next boogeyman. They needed the, uh, Russia to become that next, you know, terrorism that, you know, Russia's hacking the elections, everything. They needed that narrative to be painted just so that they could continue their warmongering, you know, in the Ukraine, continue their efforts in Syria. But the American public is waking up, V. They're not buying that narrative anymore. Oh, absolutely, man. No no one is buying that narrative anymore. You know, it, it's this whole, you know, Russian boogeyman kind of nonsense. It's, it, it's ridiculous, man. And you know what? It's it's <laughs> It's so dumb. It's so dumb. How are you going to isolate anybody? I said this when, when they first announced CJ. Anybody who's a trading partner of China, you cannot sanction, period. You cannot sanction anyone who is a trading partner of the Chinese. It's not going to happen. Unreal. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and then also, V, in terms of that, you know, an interesting move in terms of the United States, you know, deploying the THAAD uh, missile system to, to South Korea. And, you know, obviously a lot of the, some of the, the MSM and the, the, the new media are freaking out about that, saying, oh, we're continuing military state. I mean, to me, that's just more of, of, of a voice of, oh. of strength of, right. listen, we're going to do what we want to do. You know, there's, you know, we're not going to wait for, you know, for political correctness to tell us what moves. And, and, and is it dangerous? I, I don't think that it is. I think it's more or less just, you know, exerting your, your, uh, your agenda into foreign policy and what it's going to look like. And in the terms of North Korea, you know, China okay. has the abilities to bring them in line right away if China decides to do so. Correct. China could absolutely right, rightfully and quickly bring the North Koreans to heel. China could collapse the King Jong, you know, some fresh fool, young dung, some dumb, you know, dim sums. Uh, what's his name? Dim sum? <laughs> Kim, uh, Kim Jong Il? Yeah, that, that's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> some dung fresh. Yeah, that's what it is. Uh, <laughs> Some fresh dung, whatever. So, uh, okay, you know, dim sums uh, uh, regime could be ended tomorrow if they wanted to. So, you know, now, now, now the, uh, the 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 libtards that are in in South Korea are saying, "Oh my God, we need to stop the fad, the terminal high altitude area defenses," which is a piece of crap second rate missile. <laughs> it really is. It's a joke compared to the S four hundred, S five hundred. It's an absolute joke. You know. So, anyway. You know, so that so, but the point is, we moved it there because you know, here's Japan. They're freaking out. They're like, wait a minute, you got this lunatic, unpredictable madman who's just firing off rockets left and right. You know, what's going to happen if one were to, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, fire its way to into Japan? Now, the Thad being as crappy as it is, it's good enough to to take out a, you know, the obsolete, you know, missiles that. North Korea launches. Those things are absolutely, you know, fifth-rate missiles, and that that has no problems against something like that. The Thad just cannot defend against anything that's Russian, but it could definitely take out a North Korean thing. So that's the only reason why we moved it there, you know, because the Japanese were getting scared, and the South Korean government were also getting for kind of freaked out. <laughs> yeah, when you, look up you about missiles, when you look up and you see missiles <laughs> that are in the that's air. A that's the problem because the, the big problem is it is this it's 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 the uh, the you know the the um the North Korean missiles they can be firing off a test missile and oops it's going in the wrong direction <laughs> that's how unreliable it is you know so that's the only reason it is because he's people are psycho man yeah yeah so ch you know China if they want to repair this and they have the 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 will to do so all they need to do is just tell North Korea to get in line you know it's not a matter I mean. They could just, you know, easily say, hey, you know, Kim Jong-il, get in line, stop this madness right now if they choose to do so. 
Yeah, absolutely, man. One. I mean, that's my thoughts on it. I could be completely off base, but that's, no, no. That's... I mean, especially after they they banned the importation of coal from North Korea, which is their biggest export. That's put a a, a huge financial hit on them, and that puts the uh, the you know the the uh, dim sums uh um you know that puts uh, a <laughs> you know <laughs> dim sums um um you know regime in in quite a, a squeeze there, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Absolutely, man. But uh, anyway, what's going on, man? It looks like uh, they're getting ready to pull the rug, and the Fed is sowing seeds of destruction to hasten this market crash. What's going on? Yeah, so it looks like the markets are signaling a little bit. You know, we're starting to see some some top players, you know, no longer investing uh, in in their own stocks. Be it slowed down to a a, a trickle. And so, oh, it's no. very, <laughs> so it's very interesting to see exactly what it's, you know, signaling, you know, so you have these, you know, corporate insiders that are no longer purchasing their own stock. In fact, this comes to us from zero hedge, but it's uh, trickled down to a 29 year uh, well, low. Yep. 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 There are. Uh, yeah. It's, it's a serious. <clears throat> it's a uh, very interesting. It's the lowest uh, in 29 years. You know, typically what we've seen over the last, you know, course of the last couple of years since 2008 is a lot of stock buybacks. We've seen it announced. We've seen, you know, Wall Street celebrate itself and saying, oh, my God, look, Amazon's buying back their stocks. Oh, it's great. It's wonderful. You know, when you're doing all these things just to keep the, the show going and now all of a sudden it's just uh, they don't want to keep buying stocks, what do they know? What do these insiders know? Because literally it's, 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 it's a form of insider trading, right? So what the heck do these guys know that we don't? Are they getting ready to pull? Which brings us to our next, our next point in the article. And this one's from uh, Market Watch, where it says that, uh, you know, Albert Edwards, okay, the, he says, you know, this guy is warning that the Fed is about to sow seeds of destruction. Well, what does that mean? You know, warm and fuzzy society generals famed Uber Bear, Albert Edwards, on Thursday warned that the Federal Reserve will sow seeds of destruction in the bond market if it moves to hike interest rates next week, as widely expected. Accelerated Fed rate hikes will cause tremors in the Treasury bond market, forcing rates up most especially in the year or two, just like in 94. And 94 has marked a historic bond market route after a rate hike by the Fed that February sent long-term bonds into a tailspin and ultimately led to the bankruptcy of affluent Orange County, California, which had borrowed heavily to finance public projects and made risky bets. Well, it's no longer the Orange County, California. It's the whole entire California at this point. <laughs> Meanwhile, expectations of the U.S. Central Bank to tighten monetary policy at its March 14th to the 15th meeting have been mounting on a stronger labor market, accelerating inflation, and the Fed's funds futures market is pricing it at an 86% 86 chance of a rate hike next week. What the hell does all this mean? Well, break it down. Break it down for us, B. Let's break it down. You know, we've been warning for quite some time. And I've been working for quite some time. You can go back, look at articles we've written. We talked about this so many times on radio. There is a bubble in the friggin' bond market. And it's been there forever. Okay. Number one. Number two, you got inflation coming. Number three, the Eurozone, which is basically a dollar recycling facility and a hidey hole for US treasuries, is literally collapsing and falling apart. Investors in the Eurozone are looking for safe havens. Okay. Now, the, all this is happening, and we know that if, if people are looking for safe havens, they typically go to U.S. Treasuries. But if the Fed raises rates next week, which I think they will, another quarter of a percent, okay, that's going to run, that's going to be a major route in the bond market, okay? That's going to cause people to go somewhere. And where do they typically go? Well, they're going to have to look for another safe haven. And this mm -hmm. is what my prediction has been for quite some time, and guys like Charles Hugh Smith, that's all, all, he also talked about it. And I agree with him. Um, people are going to be looking for safe havens. You're going to see a people run to gold. You're going to see people run to Bitcoin. But the vast majority, 90 some odd percent of these people, will be running into equities. They'll be running into stocks. So that brings me to the question. Well, you know, V, you just said that, you know, the... The corporate insiders, they're not buying their stocks. It, it, it stopped to an, to an ebb, to an absolute low crawl. 
the lowest stock buybacks in, in 29, almost 30 years. What is that doing? Well, they're they're getting ready for a rally. So what, what's going to happen is this. This collapse in the bond market is going to start off with a sell-off, okay, in the stock market. But once that sell-off occurs, you're going to see a massive buying spree occur in Wall Street as a deluge of investors in the next few days after the March 15th Fed rate hike they're going to start rushing into the market and we're going to be on our way to Dow 29,000. What's going to happen is you're going to have a lot of fear being built up. You're going to have people on mainstream media, they're going to be, well, well, well what's going to happen here, John? Well, we're not exactly sure, but when we look at this uh, candlestick here, it's in the <laughs> six sigma position. And uh, seriously, I think there's a, another chance of a Hindenburg-like event. And, uh, you know, the price injection point at this vector is very, very disturbing for me to watch this trend line. And there's simply no support here. So we're kind of concerned here, Bob. You're going to hear stuff like that. Then you're going to have the alt media saying that it's market's going to crash um, on March 15th. And all hell and bedlam is going to break loose. And then, uh, you know, they're going to assassinate Trump. And, and, then, and then Barack Obama is going to become president again. Uh, and he's going to be secretary of the, of the U.N., all at the same time and declare martial law with his army of lefty twits on, on the United States. And that's what they'll tell you. All of this crap is going to be fear mongering. And the, and the fearful investors are going to go somewhere. They're going to bring the markets low. So everybody gets in the Titanic. Okay. That's what this whole thing is about. Everybody's going to get a first class ticket. They're going to get their ticket stamped. They're going to get upgraded to first class. Everybody's going to be in on the party. Okay. <clears throat> so expect the market pullback. Everybody gets in. And boom, we are off to Dow 29,000. That's exactly what's going to happen, CJ. Boom. Boom. That's it. And speaking about all that stuff, uh, what is the retarded European Monetary Fund doing? Yeah. Yeah. Way? Real quick, you know, before we go there, it's very interesting. And I meant to put this in our in our notes but yesterday during and i was pronounced his name wrong spicer is it spicer the press secretary uh -huh. spicer spicer it's very interesting. spicy spicy yeah very interesting so spicy watching him <laughs> very interesting enough yesterday during his presser uh one of the uh the reporters uh, specifically asked if trump was still considering uh putting placing glass steagall back in in play yeah uh yeah during that interview and and, and he said Yes, it's still it's still on the table, and um, correct me if I'm wrong here, just so our listeners understand. But Glass Steagall basically what it did was when that was removed, it allowed banks to also become investment uh, firms. So, for example, like right now you have J.P. Morgan Chase. Well, before Glass Steagall, banks could not be attached to a, an investment arm of that nature, and and lo and behold, yeah. once once that take took place. That's where we saw so much fraudulent, bogus money. You know, for example, you know, and I've seen it in in in, in the banking industry before. What will happen is, is that there'll be a financial advisor, and you know, he'll sit down, he'll talk to someone, and bring over half a million million, and what they'll do v is they'll they'll put that for for a short time period in a in a in a, in a bank account uh, just so that they can use that for fractional lending. And and just before the number of days that's required, so the bank can get credit for it, can lend on that that five hundred thousand, that half million dollars. Just before the days it's going to incur any type of tax penalty, whatever, they'll yank that money then, and then put it in to an investment portfolio. Right. And uh, you know, so it's very interesting to hear hear them say that. So, you know, and I know uh, Harley Schlanger's been you know advocating for that with Larouche Pack. So yep. hopefully that that does that does happen. No, oh, absolutely, man. I mean, they've been in the forefront of this, and uh, hopefully, they get that through. I mean, something was going to happen. I mean, look, look at what the the, EF, the European Monetary Fund was talking about, right? Debate rates yeah. in Europe, whether or not take take the two speed <laughs> or the multi speed this approach to post Brexit. I mean, this is ridiculous, right? <laughs> Germany rekindled its interest in the creation of the European Monetary Fund. <laughs> now, here's a brainiac for you, <laughs> Chancellor Chancellor Angela Merkel and Finance Minister. He's another genius over here, Wolfgang Schwabel. Uh, both <laughs> say Schwabel's name fast over and over. 
Yeah. Both want to upgrade the grossly unaccountable Luxembourg-based European stability, the ESM, into the IMF-style rescue fund. that will be granted the authority to monitor the finances of the, all the Eurozone countries. The EU Monetary Commission, um, under former French Minister Pierre Moscovici, is against it for the simple reason monitoring budgetary policy in the Eurozone is, for the moment, the responsibility of the EU Commission. This is not the first time the idea of a European monetary fund has been explored ever since the Eurozone sovereign debt crisis has threatened to rip Europe's fragile... U this is stupid. <laughs> I can't even go forth to read this with any sort of serious... You know what this is saying? It's like, okay, the car is not working. It's breaking down as we're driving it. Quick, Bob, go out there and remove one of the wheels. Maybe that'll help us go faster. It's the same thing. The European Commission with the ESF has been, you know, the, the, the European uh, Stabilization Fund, okay, they, they've been running uh, all sorts of bailouts and schmail. What's another similar mechanism or bureaucracy? What are they going to do? This is what I'm saying. These people who've never held a job in their life, who just sit there reading textbooks and acadam they spent their careers in academia or in law so they can learn how to break the law and get around the law, who've never created anything. Their answer to freeing up the Eurozone is more bureaucracy, another bureaucratic arm that can go out there and throw more debt. But V, but V, the, yeah. Economist, the Economist magazine organized a roundtable discussion with the the chief of European policy studies, which was Thomas Mayer, and guess who he was? He was the chief economist at Deutsche Bank. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, there's there's the guy who knows how to you know keep things uh, well healed together. I mean, the Economist. Who the hell reads the Economist magazine? It's a dish <laughs> rag. You gotta be you gotta be a fool to read that. It's it's ridiculous, man. Unreal. Which brings us to the BS article of the week, CJ. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, so huge child porn case and this involves the the FBI actually you know creating you know malware which we we're, were aware of where they were actually able to track people to the visited this this website called uh, playpen mm -hmm. and uh, you know they monitored this this website they were able to, they were able to track you know get the real IP addresses of where people are coming from you know so thousands of thousands of of, of of images and and videos of of you know ch child pornography, which you know obviously you know we we feel about that is that that that's a, a an absolute no no. I mean that's that we hang you for that type of stuff. No, I, I recommend taking every pedophile, taking a fifty caliber Desert Eagle, putting it to the back of their skulls and pulling the trigger. But that's just me. Go ahead, CJ. Yeah. So in other words, in this in this court case. And then when they went to prosecute, quote unquote, in law enforcement situations, some people have the mentality that ends justifies the means, uh, referring to the news about uh, McCullough. I do not think they would love to have done this in the drug case. So basically what they're doing is, is that they're they're not going to prosecute primarily because they have came back and said that because the, the FBI actually got involved with the, the website in terms of trying to. In other words, they're trying to say they lure people in to this V. They lured people right. into uploading these images. They lured people in. Uh, in other words, they were trying to create more customers. So therefore, therefore, uh, they're not going to prosecute a, a good amount of, poor, of of these people that were were visiting this site and doing these things. Just you know, pure pure stupidity. So for the sanction, for for the reason of protecting, you know, what they did and how they did it, they're not going to prosecute because they they don't want that to come out into the open. You know, um, it's unreal. <clears throat> unreal. Anybody who makes a move on innocent children like that, this is what I'm saying. It's like these laws need this entrapment laws when it comes to pedophilia and child trafficking needs to be re rewritten. Because if you are a sick son of a bitch, you piece of crap that gets your sexual jollies from going online and looking at imagery of innocent children, you disgusting piece of crap, you should be killed. I'm telling you right now, CJ, I will, go, I, I will gladly kill a pedophile and sleep well at night. Yeah, and it just... It I just, have no... I, I know I'll be doing the Lord's work. You know, and again, one could argue, yes, they should have just, you know, shut down the site, you know, the moment that they took over it. 
and then you have this this prosecuting attorney that says, you know, we're not going to file charges because you know the the feds actually drew more people in into this. Well, people don't find out about those those sites. People do not find out about the 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 deep web, the dark web, you know, just by not knowing or where to go to search out. So so they're guilty of this. I mean, it just it just amazed me that they would just drop charges and not do this. It just just really irritating. It just, just doesn't make sense at all. So and then the other part about this V that's so basically you're allowing these these pedophiles they're back on the street. They're, right. they're, they're, so what are they going to do the next time? You know that the repeated cases that these people that get charged for these offenses, what do they do? They go out and do something or even harsher, you know, the next time. Right. Just just pure stupidity. Absolutely, man. One thousand percent. Which brings us to the end of the broadcast, sir. See to give out your closing comments. Yeah, everyone check out Ken's article, roguemoney.net. Uh, we have a great show lined up this afternoon at four o'clock. Uh, we have Monica Perez, who we uh, previously had on. She has her own uh, radio show out of uh, Atlanta. So we're excited to have her uh, joining us on this afternoon's live uh, broadcast. So make sure you check back here at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Absolutely. And with that being said, guys, I am uh, the one and only Majestic Gape, and uh, my man CJ, we are going to be rocking and rolling until then. We will, uh, again, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, and uh, follow us. Keep, keep, keep it posted right here as we're uh, heading for some rough waters. You're going to need all the common sense. Uh, you're going to need some real common sense reporting, and somebody who's going to bring some balance, and that's, that's us. So with that being said, we are over, and we're out. Take it away, CJ.